So here's an overly dramatic way to introduce a room. Now, of course, you're probably thinking this is a bit over the top, but blue is a great theatrical color. Problem is, you can't see the whole room at this point. So let's give you a wider angle. Well, this shot now gives us more perspective, but why don't we shed a little light on the subject? And here we go, a dramatic way to introduce the room. So this is the great room. This is the room uh, that is center to my home. And I'm gonna step you through a couple things, including some before and after shots so that you can see actually what I started with and that what I came into. Uh, it's been many months in uh, the making, actually not that many months, but it's been some time in the making of certain decisions and additions and subtractions and, and whatnot. Uh, let me uh, get up closer so I can uh, talk to you a little bit and we'll uh, try to get some shed some actual light on the subject and there we go with that wonderful so uh, the room the great room it's not theatric necessarily it's not blue it's actually red as you can see by the the uh, red feature walls and antique red that I got uh, it's a Valspar paint. We can give you more of that detail later. I've decided uh, this color episode has taken some time to actually put together and get all the correct ideas out there without creating 30-minute individual episodes in a two-hour series, uh, which I didn't want to bore you with those kind of details that most people kind of probably already know. I am adding one additional episode to the end of it, so it's going to be a four-part series. The last part will deal with color temperature, something that we've talked a little bit about, but really not had an actual demo of why you would even use it. Uh, and I think that in, in some ways it's still a specialty area, so not everyone's going to use it. But this is the, uh, the episode right now talking about light and color is kind of like what I did. Then I'm going to talk about the why, and that is really more in terms of color, in terms of paint, in terms of cloth. Um, colored textures, anything that is not actual colored light. Then we'll go into colored light by itself, and then we'll go into color temperature as the fourth episode. So, talking about the what I did, and uh, now I'm going to show you the before, and the before was pretty much a blank canvas, even though this space uh, came not completely as white walls. It's got some beige uh, walls to start with, it's got some white or near white trim elements and of course dark wood uh, flooring and then or uh, faux wood flooring will be uh, transparent on that and some kind of a darker um, tan carpeting and uh, so adding the different elements and so forth um, it was time to figure out well what do I want to do to really make it pop um, which was easier so let's switch over to the guest bath which is the second thing that I want to show you this pretty much I just added elements didn't have to paint didn't have to do a whole lot of really customizing uh, heavy duty in a way that well, I would have to undo it when I left but uh, this is a lot of different accents and a lot of different small pieces that kind of add up to making what I call the blue guest bath not that it's blue and it's depressing but it's just a really wonderful um, many multiple shades of blue and even kind of dipping into that sort of ocean spectrum that I would call it but let's jump back to the great room. Let's jump back right here. And you'll look at the sides and you'll look at things and you'll go, well, that's great. Looks really bright. Actually, it's not. Uh, it is uh, set this way. It's a little darker than I would normally actually have it as what I call my everyday sort of general uh, lighting setting or scene. But uh, it had to be this way to make it look correct on camera. We'll get into more of that later. So I went bold. Uh, the before didn't have anything, so I said, I really want a color, and this is something we'll discuss in the next little episode, and I said I wanted something that was going to be really bold, striking, but not too striking, and you have to pick the right shade of paint, whatever you're going, whatever color you're ultimately going to go with, and uh, I went with this uh, antique red, like I said, it's from Valspar, and I painted the facing walls, that means they're literally parallel completely parallel to each other, and just portions of the entire room so it doesn't overpower it. 
and depending on how you light it, you can then get different effects with your uh, up lighting uh, and different light that you may choose to put on a feature wall. And as you can see, other things uh, in terms of what I have done, uh, most of the furniture was transferred from a different place, but in this place, um, and once I changed the wall colors, it allowed some of the furniture to pop. You'd actually see the furniture in a little bit different light just because of what the background it was on, including my existing um, small dining room set that it happens to pop a lot more against the red as well. And then I added this uh, hanging multi-level, multi-panel textured piece, which is three-dimensional and it does give you a little bit of uh, that perspective, it's all the rage with the smartphones and so forth. It's the parallax effect, so if you go back and forth, you can actually see a little bit of 3D. And it's backlit and it uh, creates a really cool effect, depending on how it's lit, whether it's front lit, back lit, both, or very, very subtly when it's in like a theatrical or media watching mode. So that's kind of the, the basics of the room. And why I did it was simply because, well, I could it was it was something it was it was a design challenge and I simply said let's uh, let's go farther than I have before my own design uh, specifications the way that I design rooms and design things with light usually and I haven't always gone bolder with color you know painting a wall is obviously something that's reversible but it's a commitment on time so you have to really make the right choice but as a good friend of mine said it's only paint you can paint right over it and that of course is very true. And uh, jumping back to the blue guest bath, it was uh, an evolution of uh, going out to various stores looking for different hues. Uh, once you put certain elements in place, I like to take pictures of things and make and look at it uh, while I'm at the store and look at my space so that I know what's going to match up. Now, it's never going to be perfect, and so I have a whole broad range of blues and aquas and it really actually goes pretty well together. And when you get some really cool lighting effects, even just from the sun, really makes some of the colors really pop. And uh, you can do a lot with a little, all kinds of just little bits and pieces uh, placed into an ordinary, pretty much just white uh, guest bathroom. So that's pretty much it. We're gonna go into the, the whys and so forth a little more in depth in the next one. But I want to actually show you the space. I've been showing you different pieces of my home and eventually we're gonna put the entire um, sort of puzzle together with all these pieces that you've been seeing. But you, you've seen me next to the TV, you've seen me against the 3D uh, sort of panel uh, hanging thing, but you've never seen the room as it is. And eventually you're gonna see we're going to turn you around in the next couple of episodes and you'll see a few more areas. But that's a little bit as to the how, um, or really it's not the how, it's the what I did. I don't even know what I'm talking about. So why would you even watch this series? No, please keep watching. And speaking of that, as you're watching this series, if you like what I'm talking about and some of the design ideas I can give you, please support the show through Patreon. Patreon's a kind of a cool way to, it's kind of like a Kickstarter for ongoing projects. So you can donate to the show and ultimately we'll get rid of the ads and that will be super awesome. We'll be a completely fan supported show. So there's Patreon, you can support us. If you have design questions and things like that, things about lighting and the internet of things, home automation, those topics, some of those topics we haven't even gotten into yet, but we'll be doing soon. Uh, get us through social media, get us on the email, questions at answers.lighting. I have to kind of think of that sometimes because it's a tongue twister, it's backwards. Uh, so there's all the social media stuff, the email address, support us through Patreon, and again, this, this particular part of Lighting Answers is a little mini series, and uh, so this was episode one, we'll jump to episode two next. So I'm Joe Ganzik, I've been giving you some Lighting Answers on color and light. And I'll talk to you next time.